Hey, what is going on guys? And today I'm reaching way back in the backlog again to bring out one that I've had in my collection for a long time that I have been dying to build, finally getting around to building this, is the Master Grade Age 1 Spallow, uh, or Sparrow, I guess depending on how you want to call it, but Spallow, as it says on the box anyway, is the slim version of the Age 1. Still have never watched Age, I'll admit, uh, but it is a pretty cool design, and kind of the main reason that I got this was because I'd seen some cool custom builds of this, uh, painting it up basically in Evangelion colors, which is what I would like to do with mine. I want to give that a try. I think the design, like, matches pretty well like with, Ava with Evangelion colors, so I think it's going to be pretty awesome when that's done. But anyway, we got to build it up and review it first, so let's go ahead and do that, starting off with the box. So we got some very cool artwork here on the front of the box, some different uh, mobile suits from Gundam Age there in the background. You can see a number of different ones, uh, and just the spell looking very cool. There, I just, again, I really like the slim design of this. If you like a kit that has a lot of accessories, though, you might not be very pleased with this as it doesn't really come with a whole lot. Uh, but it is pretty cheap. That is, if you can find it, the different Master Grade Age kits can often be hard to get your hands on because they don't make them very often and they are pretty popular. Despite the series not being all that popular, the Master Grade kits do sell out pretty quick. So here on the end of the box, you just kind of got the same thing. On the side of the box here, it's showing off some of the nice detail of the inner frame. Obviously, it being a Master Grade, that's not really a big surprise, but they're just proud of that part, I guess. Uh, action pose, cockpit, it's got all of that. It's got the age symbol there on the front of the chest, of course. There's a front and rear view of what it looks like when it's all built and painted up. Again, as much as I like the design of these colors, I don't know, something, I mean, the black legs are a bit odd. I mean, the original color scheme, I would have to tweak a little bit if I wanted to go for that, but like I said, I'm not planning on using that original color scheme. Uh, over here on the side of the box, some more action poses, some gimmicks here of the shoulder mechanism, everything there, the marking for that, which I believe is probably going to be maybe a couple of dry transfers, mostly stickers though I would imagine inside the box here once we get it popped open. Legs, the hand parts, are just going to have the swappable hand parts. If you guys have built some of the recent gym variants, like the Gym Sniper 2, etc., uh, it's using the same hand parts. The actual like palm is different, but the finger parts are going to be the same if you guys have seen that anyway, so some of them anyway. And over here, a look at the kit completely unpainted straight out of the box. And this, I've had this kit, like I said, for a while. So it does still have the list price on here. The list price is 3,500 yen. So like I said, very affordable. That, again, just depends on, of course, if you can find it. So in here, we've got a whole bunch of stuff. What's this? A little advertisement for Age First Evolution. Maybe that's a must be an Age Manga series, I guess. I don't know. Uh, and then all of our runners, which we'll go through here in just a minute. But let's first just check out the manual. On the front of the manual, you just got the box art there. Once again, on the back side, just a nice big photograph of the kit there, so you can get a good sense of that. Again, this is just a painted sample there, but you got a nice big reference photo. On the inside, some more information here, all in Japanese. Some line art, though, that looks really nice, and some other artwork down here. And then just some tips on applying the decals. Looks like, yeah, dry transfer decals. It's giving you tips on how to apply those. Then we're on into our parts list. Again, not a ton of runners in here necessarily, with it being a pretty slim design and straight on into the construction. But here in the middle pages, we have some more information. Well, once again, it's all in Japanese, so we've just got some information there. Our painting guide there, all in Japanese painting guide there for the figures. And it looks like we have a couple different pilot standing figures as well as the seated pilot figure there. Uh, a tip for panel lining the kit and some more action poses and things over here. So again, great reference for posing the kit. If you build it and you're having trouble, you know, doing a cool pose, just refer to what you got here in the manual. I got some cool poses there with the knife blades. That's going to be basically the only weapon I mentioned before about having not a ton of weapons and accessories. Those uh, knives are basically all it's got. But again, it's very Evangelion-esque. Going here to the back page, we have the layout of where all the decals are going to go. I don't think it's really going to have all that many of them, but there's a number of them, as you can see, where those go on there. And let's go ahead and uh, check those out, as well as the rest of the runners. All right, so we've got a number of different stickers and things here. Starting off with your basic foil stickers there for the eyes and head camera, that's pretty much to be expected. Then we also have these mirror stickers, which are similar to the foil stickers, but it's a little bit like thinner and more flexible kind of material, less like paper and a little bit more kind of rubbery. Anyway, these mirror stickers that are gonna go behind your clear parts to make them shine very nice and brightly. Then you got your standard marking stickers here. You got a good amount of these, these small little caution markings that are gonna go around everywhere and a couple little big stripes on there. And then your dry transfer decals, which are nice, I guess. I would prefer water slide decals, of course. I don't really like dry transfers all that much, but in a bind, you know, they can be good to use. I don't really plan on using them with this one, though. Probably not, so I don't know. I might not use these. But okay, so we got to PC207 for our polycaps here in gray. 
and a runner MP3 here for our hand parts. Now, like I said, this is a familiar runner if you've built the Master Grade Gym Sniper 2, for example, as it's usually this part of the runner here and these parts at the top you'll omit and you'll only use the hand parts there. Bottom, we have the addition of some new hand parts for this particular version of the kit over here on the side though as well too. Our A runner here in this case is strangely only in one color, not two or three or four, and it's quite small actually, just a few parts on there, but this is in a really nice blue color. Runner B also quite small, it's just a few parts there in red. Runner C is going to give us our yellow parts for the collar, the skirt armor pieces, and chest vents. Runner D in a clear, slightly bluish green color here for the eyes and the A in the front of the chest. Runner E here in white for some head parts as well as some pilot figures down there. And runner F here is our first full-size runner in gray, as mostly inner frame parts there, it does look really nice. Runner G here is once again back to that same color blue we saw on the A runner. Runner H is back to white where we got some more white armor parts as well as some new pilot figures on there. So it looks like we're going to have three different standing pilot figures included with this kit. Runner I is our super dark gray, sort of meant to be black parts there for around on the feet and the lower legs. Runner J is another gray runner here of some more inner frame parts. And the same thing for runner K again as well. And it seems like, you know, the inner frame does seem pretty nicely detailed, but mostly in any areas where it might show. So you got like these parts on here, over here, for example, just kind of more just structural joint parts that are obviously not going to be as nicely detailed. But anywhere where the frame is going to show, it does look pretty nicely detailed. And finally, last, and I don't know, maybe sort of least in this case, is Runner L, which is just our singular clear green knife blade. And it is in the same color as the clear green we saw on the D runner as well too. Now, I was only noticing that we had actually had two of these knives, but I guess we only have the one. That's okay anyway, so that's it. So there you have it guys, like I said, not a ton of stuff in there, relatively simple master grade, but it should be pretty nice. It does look really cool. So let me go ahead and get this all put together and we'll see how it looks. All right, here it is guys, all put together. And it was a pretty quick build, as you might imagine, not really the most complicated master grade out there, even though, I mean, it's a pretty, you know, like slim design, but even the inner frame as well too, is pretty simple. So it was a pretty quick build. And that also explains, you know, the fairly cheap price of it, as we saw 3,500 yen for this, not too expensive. So, I mean, it's all reflected here in it being a pretty basic kit, which I mean, you might like or you might not. I think probably if you're enjoying this kit or looking forward to getting this kit, it's probably just because you like the design. It's not necessarily because you're looking for a super complex, complicated master or anything like that. If you wanted a age one Sparrow in 100 scale, this is basically the only option. There's no other like non-grade 100 scale option or anything like that. So if what you enjoy more about the master grade experience is that having a more complicated frame and a lot more parts and a lot more detail and things like that, then maybe this is not the kit for you. That said, there is a fair amount of detail on there. It doesn't, it's not, it's not necessarily lacking a detail department. But anyway, let's just go ahead and jump into the accessories, which are also pretty minimal. So yeah, our only real weapon here is the Shigeru blade, which is just a couple of parts, a couple of white parts there for the handle, the gray piece, and then our clear piece. I mean, it looks really nice. It's just simple and a pretty good size. It's not like a typical like small knife or something like that. It's a little bit larger than that anyway, you can see there compared to like the Gundam's arm, for example. So that'll just be held in the hand. And when not held in the hand, you can store this here on the back screen, flip that part down, and this fits right down into there. Just clip that into place like so for storage like that. Now as for the hands, we've got just swappable fingers. So you've got just closed fists here and you can swap those out for holding hands. You have a set of holding hand fingers for the left and the right side. And then it's open hands like this with the fingers curved. And now you have like straight fingers as well too. And they're interesting because they actually, this closed fist is made up of two separate parts. So you pop out just the first two fingers and then you can replace that with just these two pointed fingers like that if you wanted to do some kind of, uh, I don't know what martial arts that would be, I don't know, jujitsu looking sort of hands here in your, when you're doing your martial arts poses. You can also swap out the second set as well too, just to make them completely flat hands. There, like that. If you wanted to do just uh, like a chopping or running style hand, something like that, you can do that, just having all four fingers uh, extended. So there's your hand options. You got some nice options there. You have just your standard action base adapter here. You can use to put that up on a base. And your two included standing little uh, pilot and character figures here that you get included. Now you do also have the one that was original with just the age one normal. Uh, and I do have that kit in my stash as well too, the MGH1 normal. I'll review that for you guys in the future as well too. But uh, that's the one that you get with the original and then these are the two that you get uh, new with this kit which do look pretty nice, so I like those. And that is it as far as the accessories go. So like I said, it's pretty minimal. You do have another seated pilot figure which is up inside the cockpit here. You just pull that out and that uh, little kind of monitor display in there just kind of like pops down as you slide the cockpit out. You kind of like push it back in there as you close that up. But it's kind of interesting. Pull that out and then 
fold that down and then fold this up like that. And then you can see your seated pilot figure up inside there. So yeah, it's like a little uh, monitor screen in front of the pilot there, which will drop down like that. Then close this up and slide that back into there. So pretty cool cockpit uh, hatch open there. I did put the mirror chrome stickers in behind the clear part so you guys can see that. Well, for the eyes, I did put the sticker on that just so you guys can see a nice bl uh, black background around the eyes. Otherwise, it'd just be a perfectly clear part. There is also a sticker to give you a black outline around this part here on the head. I didn't put that one on there just so you guys could see what it looks like with just the clear part on there. And also here in the back, as well too, that's just the sticker, just a foil sticker. There's no clear green part for there, unfortunately, but that's what you got there on the back. But the clear green part with the uh, mirror sticker underneath looks really nice there for the chest and then up here in the head as well too. For the eyes, it does look good. You just have to paint black around the eyes, but it would give you basically a similar look as to what you get just from using the foil sticker included with this. Now with this being a sort of martial arts themed mobile suit, you expect the articulation to be pretty good to be able to do some cool martial arts poses. Let's go ahead and check that out. Right off the bat, the head articulation up is going to be a little bit uh, lacking. That's as far as it will go up. Kind of wish that that would could go up a little bit farther. Uh, but then down, you do have a double joint in there. So aside from just the ball joint that the head is on, the whole neck piece will move uh, forward and back a little bit there as well too. So down, it goes plenty down. It's just up. You can't really get any farther up than that, unfortunately. As for the stomach section, you only can move it forward a little bit, not that much, but it goes uh, back a little bit better. You do have two joints in there. Again, it's like the ball joint that's connected onto there in the middle section, and there's another joint up in the middle of the torso there. So you do have a double joint, uh, but this doesn't go forward all that much back. You can go a little bit farther like that, and then I guess if you put the head up, that's gonna look a little bit better for like doing flying poses or something. Side to side as well too, you've got a little bit, but nothing too crazy, and then just of course some rotation there. The shoulder joint is kind of interesting, how it's kind of like using a polycap ball joint in there which I'm a little bit nervous about that over time that could get to kind of loose but for now it's holding up all right that will bend back like that and then to bend it forward you can kind of bend it forward like that but you kind of pull it out and then bend it forward a little bit more to get that really far uh, bend over kind of across the chest like that so you would use that but yeah just with that shoulder extended out a little bit you can then bring the shoulder up a little bit higher the shoulder armor itself will move up by itself and then you can bring the arm a little bit tight here yeah the shoulder joint there the the bend of here at the top of the arm is really tight so i'm just really nervous that it's going to be uh breaking something as i'm trying to bend the arm up but as you can see this little white flap on the side of the shoulder armor also does move up and out of the way so you should be able to get the arm up really high if you can just bend it without it being too tight there Hey, for now, let's say that it goes up to about there, but I feel like you could probably bend that up a little bit more, or it should be able to, but it's just really tight. I'm just kind of nervous about that. But there's the upward movement of the arm there, and then it is a very thick biceps here. You've got some rotation there as normal, and then a double joint in the elbow to give you a nice full bend there. Here on the back of the arm too, these little flaps will open up. You got one, two of those that are separately articulated to open up on the back of the arm, which is pretty cool like that. The wrist is on a ball joint, but then you do also have another hinge here, uh, kind, of, kind of like at the front of the wrist that will just hinge up and down like that. And then the thumb is on a ball joint and you do have a bend in the thumb as well too. Unfortunately, you can't bend it any further back like that to do a thumbs up pose. Also in the hands, aside from this movement forward and back like that, you can rotate the hand here in front of that circular bit as well too. So that's a kind of interesting point of articulation for the hands here. Our front skirt armor pretty minimal here, so that'll just move up and out of the way. Out of the side skirt armor also just move up and out of the way like that completely. You do have a separate gray like frame pieces up underneath there, so that's nice. Outward angle of the leg shouldn't be an issue as that side skirt moves completely out of the way like that. The back skirts are kind of interesting as these blue parts are kind of connected up into the yellow parts and they just kind of hang loosely when not connected. So if you disengage that and then it's just kind of like a little bit loose here and that will be able to move once you move up this yellow piece up like that. You can move this up whether it's connected or not. But keeping that connected, you can move up the back skirts as well too. As we saw before, you can open up this little hatch there for storing the knife on the back. And otherwise, nothing else really moves here on the backpack, but that does look nice. I do like the age backpack. Some people, not a big fan of the spoiler on the back. I don't know. I, I don't mind it. it. It's definitely grown on me over time. It's a cool, unique backpack for the age one, I think. So as for the legs, like we saw, uh, it can rotate there at the top and then all the way up to the front like that. Not going to be an issue. You've got a nice double joint here in the knee where there's no like separation of any knee armor or anything like that. It's just like the thigh armor here and then the lower leg armor. This part will move a little bit on its own like that. 
And you do have this little bit in here, which I'm not actually sure if that's supposed to be some sort of beam weapon or like a beam saber or something stored up in the knee. I don't know necessarily. Sorry, I've not watched Age, so I'm not familiar with that, but then you got that little bit up inside the knee there. I said also when moving the leg around, this piece of armor up here at the top can kind of come loose pretty easily. You can see that it just comes loose on there while moving stuff around and then you kind of have to work that back down into place so just be careful with that. You do have a little bit of a seam here on the back of the leg like the top of the calf there is a seam line right in the middle of that. Then down here on the ankle armor this kind of little bit of a sort of ankle armor quote unquote this little white bit does move a little bit on its own there. The ankle will move forward all the way up to there back back to there the toe does move a little bit on its own but again not really all that much just a little bit and ankles will move side to side plenty for getting a nice wide stance out of this as well too and then up underneath the feet you've got some detail there as well but anyway guys let's just check out some different poses with this kit and yeah with only one weapon and just a couple of hand options your poses are going to be, I guess, somewhat limited, but still the articulation is there. And I mean, you can just do all sorts of different martial arts poses, I guess. You'd have to look into it. Basically, what I'm going to be using for my uh, posing ideas is just mostly referring to different poses that are shown off in the manual. But it's definitely a solid kit. And aside from that shoulder being very tight, otherwise, I mean, all the articulation is really nice. And I think just generally speaking about the design of the Gundam, it does a really good job pulling off this sort of like, I don't know, ninja or martial arts sort of look in just the general design of the Gundam as well too. So it looks really cool if that's the kind of thing that you're into. Um, I know this Master Grade is not always the easiest to get your hands on, but if you can, you know, I would definitely recommend it. And again, it shouldn't really cost you all that much as well too. So if you're an age fan or just looking for a nice, like more simple, maybe martial arts themed mobile suits in 100 scale master grade form, something like this. I think it's a cool design, definitely worth checking out. Some people, or I think probably a lot of people have just kind of written off Gundam Age as something that they're just not interested in just because of what they've seen or just maybe, you know, not even watched of the anime like myself. I've not ever really watched any of the anime either. Anyway. But I do still like some of the designs and this one included. Also the Age 1 Normal, so I definitely do plan on uh, building and reviewing that kit uh, eventually. And I'll share that with you guys as well too. I actually kind of like that one a little bit more just in that it's sort of like the kind of different version of the RX-782 in a way. It's very RX-782 inspired, I guess, sort of or uh, by its design. But anyway, that's gonna do it for today, guys. So of course, if you do have any other further questions or comments, do feel free to leave those down below. And as always, a big thank you to USA Gundam Store for making it all possible, well, guys. Check the link in the video description to USA Gundam Store. You can shop around there, and anything you find on the store, you can save 10% off using the coupon code there, Zacharelius10, that's also down there in the video description below. So until next time, guys, I hope you all are having a great day. Thank you so much for your support. I'll see y'all later. Bye, guys.